colorful interference pattern on a soap bubble reveals the wave nature of light. Yet the functioning of a photocell is only explained by the quantum particle nature of light. Such observations led Niels Bohr to set forth a principle of complementarity, which stated that either wave theory or particle theory, but not both, could be used to explain a particular light phenomenon. As we shall see, the principle of wave-particle duality is not only applicable to light, but to all material objects. In 1924, Louis de Broglie reasoned that if light can behave as both a wave and a particle, then maybe a material particle, such as an electron, can also behave as a wave. He proposed that the wavelength of this matter wave is related to the particle's momentum, similar to the case for a photon of light. This wavelength is now known as the de Broglie wavelength. What is the de Broglie wavelength of a 5.0 kilogram bowling ball moving at 2.0 meters per second? Correct, it is an extremely small number. De Broglie used his hypothesis to explain Bohr's atomic theory of hydrogen. Because the hydrogen electron travels in a discrete circular orbit in the Bohr model, the matter wave associated with it is a standing circular wave. This standing wave can only have an integral number of wavelengths. The radius of the Bohr orbit is thus related to an integral number of de Broglie wavelengths. Substituting for the wavelength using his momentum equation, de Broglie showed that the angular momentum of the hydrogen electron is quantized as proposed by Bohr. The wavelengths of ordinary objects are much too small to detect. However, that is not the case for very tiny, slow-moving particles such as electrons. What is the de Broglie wavelength of an electron accelerated by a potential of 54 volts? The kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the work done accelerating it. By expressing the kinetic energy in terms of momentum, the de Broglie wavelength can then be calculated. The wavelength is extremely small, but detectable experimentally. In 1927, Clinton Davison and Lester Germer accelerated a beam of electrons through a potential of 54 volts and directed it on a single crystal of nickel. The diffracted beam had a maximum intensity at an angle of 50 degrees relative to the surface normal. The wavelength required by wave theory in order to produce such a maximum is the same as the calculated de Broglie wavelength of the electron. Another electron diffraction experiment carried out by George Thomson in the same year provided further proof of de Broglie's theory. Thomson bombarded materials with a beam of electrons. The beam was scattered into a series of concentric rings similar to the diffraction pattern observed for X-rays. Germer and Thomson both won Nobel Prizes for their efforts. Because electrons can undergo diffraction just like light waves, they can also be focused into an image like light waves. An important practical application of the wave nature of electrons is the scanning electron microscope, or SEM. A typical scanning electron microscope accelerates an electron through a potential of 15 kilovolts. How does the wavelength of that electron compare to that of yellow light at 500 nanometers? Correct, it's very much smaller. Which type of microscope has the greater resolving power, an optical microscope or an SEM? Correct. That's because the resolving power is determined by the wavelength of the probing electron or photon.